Good morning, guys. All right, so this is take two of this lesson. I did one without audio. So this lesson is going to be about the wonders of having a job and the financial responsibilities that come with that. So once you get a job, yay, congrats. Uh, this is going to be, let's say, a part-time job that you have a contract, not like a cash-based babysitting job. There's a few things you need to know about. First off, when you start to sign your contract, they're going to ask you to fill in this TD1 form, also known as a personal tax credit form. And I know when I first got my very first job, uh, when I got this form, it looked a little overwhelming. So hopefully I can make that a little familiar to you. The next thing, after you've been working, you'll eventually get an earnings statement. This is going to show you how you're getting paid and how much. And you should really know how to read this and pull out some key information. Then when it comes tax time, you're going to have to know what a T4 is because you have to keep these and hold on to them and you're going to do your tax returns. So first off, we're going to start with the TD1 form. Okay, so again, TD1, we need to be able to recognize this form, know how to fill it in. You only fill this in once. Okay, only fill this in once when you first start your job. This is not a monthly or a yearly form. You would also fill in a new one for every new job you get. There's two forms that you fill in, one for the federal government and one for the provincial government. The goal of this form is to inform your employer of the appropriate amount of income tax that they need to deduct. All right, so we'll be talking about income tax today your you know, paycheck will show you how much income tax they're taking off. Your employer is required to pay this income tax to the government. Now, they want to take off an appropriate amount because if they take off too little monthly, then when it comes tax time, you're going to owe. If they take off too much when it comes tax time, you're going to get a refund. So obviously refund would be the better scenario. So you don't want them taking off too little tax or that could really hurt you when it comes time to pay it all at once. Okay, this is what the start of the TD1 form looks like. Okay, let me just flip here to the larger version. Okay, here we are. TD1 form, we can see that in the corner, also known as the personal tax credit return. The idea behind this form is to figure out how much of your income tax, or sorry, of your income will not be taxed. Notice how line one, this is filled in for you, the personal basic amount. So again, this is federal, so $12,069 means every resident of Canada can claim that amount once, and that $12,000 of your income then does not get taxed. Okay, so filling in this form, pretty straightforward here. You put your name, let's say it's Smith. You put your first name, let's say it's Anne. And an initial, date of birth, follow the format. Employee number, you may actually not have, know your employee number yet. It's okay to leave that one blank at the start. You'd fill in your address, your postal code, and you'd leave this blank if you're a Canadian resident. And you need to know your social insurance number, also known as your SIN number. So that's an important thing. When you go to get a job, you're going to have to have a SIN number and know it. Okay. All right. After this, let me just zoom out here a bit. It's two pages. We can see page one and page two. Now it's all very official, looks very formal. But in reality, when you're young and just starting your first job, Many of these lines do not apply to you. So number two is a caregiver amount. Number three is if you're 65. Number four is pension. Number five is tuition. You may want to fill that one in eventually. Six is disability. Seven is a spouse or common law amount. Only if they are infirm. Um, eight is about eligible dependents. So here's the idea. You, you'd skim these over. Uh, but for the most part, these are, these are kind of 
benefits for people looking after someone who maybe has special needs or someone who has a disability or someone who is now claiming pension, things like that. So you'd want to look those over, but honestly, for most of you, the total claim amount is just going to be the basic personal amount. So you would just drop that down. Okay, so I just took that claim amount, carried it forward because none of the other lines applied to me. Then I would go to the back page. You Again, you also want to read these over. This section is really important. If you have more than one employer, you need to check this box. So if you already have a job and you're signing up for your second job, you would then check that and you would go back to the line I just filled in and instead enter zero because you can only enter that claim amount once. Okay. This one is also important. If your total income is less than the $12,000, uh, then you won't get deducted tax from any of your earnings and you would check that box. But um, honestly, it's not a bad thing. Even if your income is less than $12,000, it's not a horrible thing to still get tax taken off because then when it comes tax time, you get a sweet refund. So, I mean, that's, that's up to you. I still prefer to always be a bit conservative and lend myself to set up to be getting a refund instead of getting set up to owe money. So you want to make sure that you do this correctly. Okay, so if, you, if you're a resident, you'll leave that blank. We don't live in the Northwest Territories, so we leave that blank. The other thing you might want to pay attention to is this additional tax. Again, if you're afraid of owing, you could fill this in. So maybe, okay, I want to be a little bit safe and I'm gonna ask that they take off an additional 20 bucks every paycheck. All right, I've got multiple jobs on the go. I'm scared that I ha they're not all taking off enough tax. Gives me a little bit of a buffer. All right, anytime you wanna add this, you can ask for a new TD1 form, or you can also change this later by again, filling out a new TD1 form. Okay, then you would simply sign this, da da da, date it, and you're done, okay? So again, looks scary, but really, Fill in your personal information, skim those over, but they likely don't apply to you. Drop down the personal tax credit amount. You may or may not have more than one job, so you'd leave that blank. You don't have to get additional tax taken off. You leave that blank, sign and date, boom, okay? All right, now you'd fill one of those in for federal and one of them in for provincial, and you'd know which is which by at the top. Okay, back to our notes here. So again, the purpose of the TD1 form is so that your employer takes off as close to the correct amount as possible, but no need to panic because if there needs to be tax adjustments, it will figure itself out when you file taxes. So you'll either owe a little bit more or you'll receive a refund, okay? All right, next we're gonna look at earning statements, also known as our pay stub. Now you've got a job, you're really excited, you worked out your hourly wage and the amount of hours you worked and you're ready to get that paycheck. What you are likely going to experience when you first get your paycheck is it is much lower than you calculated and you had hoped. So with your earnings, you don't get to keep it all, especially as you get more into a higher paying salary job. So this is the real world, folks. You don't get to keep all of your earnings. So that's where it comes down to gross income versus net income. Gross income is the higher amount. That's our kind of total calculated income. Net income is a lower amount after taxes and deductions. So let's take a look at an earnings statement here. This is also again known as a pay stub. Your employer is required to send one to you either electronically or through mail to show you, you know, what you're getting paid and why. So a couple things you're going to want to look for is the pay period. This will tell you whether you're getting paid, you know, every two weeks, monthly, weekly, etc. Then you're going to want to look at your hours. Make sure that that actually totals up what you qualified yourself working and the rate and make sure that's what you agreed upon. So this current amount is simply just taking the hours, multiplying by the hourly rate for this employee. That is then going to give you your gross pay. That's what we were calculating last time. Then we have all these lovely deductions. They are going to be 
subtracting from that gross pay. So you don't actually get this amount, sadly. So then we've got a couple deductions here. Important to pay attention to these. EI, or employment insurance. Uh, CPP, also known as the Canadian or Canada Pension Plan and income tax. Income tax is going to be the larger of these three. Um, you do not pay CPP if you are less than 18. So if we add these up, that gives us our deduction category that subtracts from our current pay and leaves us with our net pay. This is what actually gets deposited into your bank account. That's what you can budget off of. Okay. Another thing here is the year to date might also be written as YTD. As you get more and more paychecks, the year to date numbers just keep increasing. Okay, they're the full year summary of your gross pay and net pay. Okay, here's just another example. Earning statements, pay subs, they don't all look different. So this is a salary. So it's not going to be an hourly rate. A earnings total, also known as the gross pay. Then we've got all of our deductions here. Notice how there's more. So we still have our CPP, we still have our EI, we still have tax. Now, your employer might be taking off other deductions. Could be about union dues, could be pension, could be about your benefits, could be parking. So those all add up. So Deductions total here, $828.05. That is subtracting from your earnings. That leaves you with your net pay. All right, again, net pay is what's actually getting deposited into your account. Other things you're going to want to pay attention to is maybe when that deposit's actually happening and what pay period this was from. Okay. Uh, when you do your worksheet, you're going to want to practice with reading those earning statements. Good idea not to just ignore that. All right, so that just summarizes back up to gross versus net. Gross pay is what we've been calculating for so far. It's the total amount that you earn before any taxes or deductions. Net pay is the sad take home amount that you realize that more gets taken off than you'd hope. And that's what is actually getting deposited into your bank account. So you don't ever get back that full gross pay unless you get a bit of a tax refund. But as you get older, you'll notice that you're not really eligible for the refunds as much anymore. So net pay is what you want to actually base your uh, monthly budgets off of. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about then what is really getting deducted? Why is our net pay so much less? Uh, the big killer is your income tax. So again, we are in a socialist economy if we think back to our economy lessons. The benefit of that is we get some program, we get some social programs, we get welfare, uh, we get you know our roads looked at, taken care of, we get schools, all of that lovely stuff. But that means we've got to pay tax. So there's federal and provincial tax. We also it is mandatory to contribute to employment insurance or EI if you're in a job that has that, and CPP Canadian Pension Plan. Then, like I showed you in that last earning statement, there might be other deductions that you're going to want to pay attention to. It could be parking, it could be, you know, a uniform rental, it could be pension, things like that. But overall, this means when it comes time to look at your pay stub, you are sad. Your amount is less than you hoped. So let's talk a little bit about that income tax. In Canada, we have a progressive tax. And again, we pay federal and provincial. Progressive tax means that you don't just, every worker in Canada doesn't pay the same amount. It is based off the income. So if you make a higher income, you pay a higher tax percentage. Lower income, lower tax percentage. And it works up at a bit of a scale or you fit into a tax bracket. Okay, and I'll show you that in a minute. Uh, so this is kind of our, this is our federal tax brackets, Okay. You'll notice here, the first tax bracket, the tax percentage is zero. So this number should look familiar to you. This is your basic personal amount, which means your money between zero to $12,069 does not get taxed. Okay? All right. Then any money between $12,000 and $19,369 gets taxed at 15%. That 15% does not apply to all $19,000. It's only like the $7,000 that is between these two numbers. 
So let's say you make $45,000 a year. That's your salary. Okay? You are in this tax bracket. That does not mean that all $45,000 that you just get, you know, 25% taken off flat. It means your first $12,000 does not get taxed. Your amount between 12 and 19 gets 15%. Your amount between 19 and 45 gets 25%. So it's a bit of a weird scale. I wouldn't really expect you to do that calculation, uh, but I'll show you at the end how you can kind of figure this out. You should be comfortable with how the system works and understand the tax brackets and that it's not all the same flat amount, uh, but you, I won't ask you to calculate that. Okay, so income tax is a big killer on our paychecks. Other things then that are mandatory are EI and CPP. These are mandatory if you are above 18. So EI, sorry, is mandatory for everybody, all workers that are in this program. That's going to deduct about 1.63% of your gross pay up to a maximum. All right. And the cool thing here is employers also pay into EI. Okay. The reason that EI is good is, well, let's be honest, a lot of people are going to be on EI right now. EI is a benefits program that helps people that have been temporarily laid off. Okay, due to unforeseen circumstances, such as a pandemic. This does not apply to getting fired. So you can't just be a jerk worker, get fired, and expect to claim EI. So this is for things like maternity leave, pat leave, uh, required to leave the job for a spouse, or you know, required to leave your job because of COVID. So EI is not going to be your full wage that you used to be used to, but it will definitely help. Okay. All right. Then we have CPP, Canada Pension Plan. Again, you don't actually have to pay this if you're younger than, whoops, if you're younger than 18, but eventually this will be about 5% of your gross income as a deduction. Your employer also pays and matches that 5%. Uh, you can then claim CPP, so pension plan, once you are 65. All right. What I want to show you right now is a tax calculator. So I will provide you a link with this. I really want you to check it out. The progressive tax, marginal tax brackets are a bit confusing. So I want you to pick your you know, dream job, look up its salary, and I want you to realize you know, what deductions are going to be taken off. So let's say your job has a income of $50,000. This is gross income before taxes. All right, let's, we'll leave everything else blank here. Take a look at our results. If our total income is $50,000, federal tax will be approximately $5,000, provincial $4,000, CPP and EI $3,000. So this is the bare minimum deductions, which means our after-tax income, our net income, is $37,304. So I would then want you to divide that by 12, figure it out monthly and think about, okay, if this was your monthly budget, would you survive? So I really want you to use this link, provide in the income of your dream job, be a little bit realistic here. So do a little bit of research and I want you to think, okay, if this was my monthly income, would I survive? And does that number shock you? So a little bit of a eye opener. All right. What I need you guys to do now is get back to that getting paid and paying taxes worksheet and complete questions two through nine.